Oh, hindi niya ako i-allow na mag-record. Um, Sir Ja, pa-click naman na po yung recording. Oh, sorry. Ang sabi niya dito? Nagre-record na ba? Nakalagay po, you are recording. Ah, okay. Okay. Okay na pala. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Sir Ja. Okay, so welcome to the second part of the discussion and it's all about fraud and forensic auditing or basically it's forensic accounting. So if I use the term interchangeably, paras lang po yan. Um, forensic accounting is just a big um, parlance of the discussion and one of it would be the auditing. So I will be using the term interchangeably in this discussion. Okay, ano sabi niya dito? Ang unahin natin i-discuss yung forensic accounting or forensic auditing. Kasi na, nabanggit ko na yung fraud kanina. Okay? Uh, sabi niya dito, ang forensic accounting ay hindi, na po, hindi naman po bago. In the year 1990s, iba lang po yung tawag noon. Ang tawag doon ay risk analysis o kaya special audit assessment. Medyo recently lang po siya nabigyan talaga ng pangalan and recently lang siya na-recognize na, oh, ito pala yung ginagawa ko kasi nabigyan nga siya ng pangalan. Okay? But this topic, this kind of practice is already being used even since in the past. Okay, iba lang yung pangalan. Ngayon, sabi dito, forensic accountants or forensic auditors or accounting, sorry, become attractive in election protest cases, mergers and consolidation, yung pagpa-perform ng due diligence engagements and instances of unexplained wealth. So, kadalasan hinahire yung mga accountants and auditors pagdating sa mga ganitong class ng issues kasi gusto lang ma-check kung Ano yung nangyari? Meron bang something behind it? So doon po mapasok yung mga accountants and auditors. Okay? CPAs working as a criminal investigator in some agencies are not aware that they have been performing forensic accounting work until they learn the actual term exists. So sabi ko nga dati, dahil iba-iba ang tawag dati, Hindi alam ng mga CPAs na gumagawa ng ganitong klase ng trabaho na ito pala yung bago, no, not bago, ito pala yung ginagawa nila until such time na nabigyan siya ng formal name which is forensic accounting. Okay? Now, forensic accounting is one of the 10 hottest jobs in the US okay, uh, with a salary potential of 100,000 or more. That's way back 2002. And just imagine this time kung gaano ito kalaki. Of course, dumadami yung mga taong gumagamit ng computer system, dumadami yung taong nagnenegosyo, dumadami yung mga incidents of, uh, of fraudulent cases. So, mas kinakailangan ng mga fraud examiners or mga forensic accountants. After the 9-11 incident, you know, yung, yung terrorist bombing, yung 9-11, FBI hired CPAs with forensic background to investigate terrorist financing. Kasi yung mga terorista, hindi nila nakita isang party pala para mapigilan mga terrorist. The terrorism is basically yung uh, pag-iimbestiga kung saan nanggagaling yung kanilang pera. Say for example, sa Pilipinas, kung sinasabi ng gobyerno na yung mga NPA ay terorista at parang 50 years nang lumalaban ang mga NPA, ang tanong natin, para lumaban ka sa isang gera o sa, para mapatuloy ka ng 50 years na lumalaban, may nagpupondo sa iyo malamang. Merong nagbibigay sa iyo ng armas, may nagbibigay sa iyo ng pera. So, kung gusto mo mapigilan ang terorism, kinakailangan mong tingnan sa galing yung finances nila. Kung makat mo yun, most likely baka ma-prevent mo yung ginagawa nila. Okay? So, aside from the DOJ's Public Authorities Office, also engaged services ng mga forensic accountants that was way back 2010. So, what is forensic accounting or forensic auditing? So forensic accounting is the specialty practice area of accountancy. It is some special area of practice accountancy that describes engagement the result from actual or anticipated disputes or litigation. So may dalawang components itong forensic accounting or auditing. Una is investigative services. Isa sa mga ginagawa nila ay nag-investiga tungkol sa isang transaction o sa isang, sa isang scenario. At pangalawa, litigation. Sinusuport, sorry, litigation support. Sinusuportan po nila ang, ang litigation o ang korte sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng ebidensya base doon sa kanilang na-investigahan. So madalas silang pumupunta sa korte 
iniimbitahan sa korte upang magbigay ng kanilang mga opinion o yung ebidensya na nakalap nila. Okay? The practice of utilizing accounting, auditing, and investigative skills to assist in legal matters. That's what we call forensic accounting. It involves evaluation ng documents of transactions by tracing their history and its bearing in the transactions and making certain that the documents have its evidentiary value for current and future references or legal engagement. So sa madaling sabi, main part ng forensic accounting is yung pag evaluate mo ng mga dokumento. Uh, basically, itong mga documents na to ay yung historical documents o yung mga documents na patungkol dun sa transactions. And um, these documents ay may tinatawag na dito evidentiary value, importante doon sa uh, legal engagement kasi may, may buried, may, may weight, may value yung evidentia ito, yung document na ito. Okay? Now, um, kadalasan, under those two um, components ng forensic accounting, may mga uh, madalas na na-encounter na yung mga forensic accountants. So, katulad ng under investigative services, ang iniimbestiga nila yung misappropriation of assets, yung pagnanakaw ng assets. Ang iniimbestiga nila yung fraudulent statements, yung pagbabago, pag-alter ng financial statements. corruption, fraud. whether yung fraud na yon ay may impact doon sa reporting na ginawa ng ating company pagdating sa kanyang financial statements. Hanggang doon lang yon kung merong bang effect. Duration of incentives, pressure, opportunities to commit fraud, attitudes, and rationalization. So sa madaling sabi, bilang isang auditor, kinakailangan na maging mapanuri ka. You have to be very um, open in any um, red flags or instances that there might be what we call a fraud triangle. Kung merong indicator, indication, na merong fraud triangle, in, ibig sabihin there's pressure, there's opportunity, and there's rationalization, then there might be fraud. So, kasama na po ito dun sa role mo bilang auditor. Ano pa? It expands increase of management, corporate audit, and audit committee. Dinadagdagan niyo yung trabaho na aside from the normal audit procedures na ginagawa mo, binibigyan ka na rin ng extra task to inquire further dun sa mga transactions ng company, ng management, and so on. 
Okay? Evaluation of fraud programs and existing controls. Sinitignan mo kung meron bang existing internal control na in-implement ang management to prevent fraudulent activities. And number four, assessment of management's ability to override controls. Tinitignan mo kung yung bang top management. Of course, they are the ones who created the internal control and they are the ones who implemented the internal control. So that means anytime they can override Pwede lang balik na rin, pwede lang suwayin yung internal control. Kasi sila yung pinanggalingan nun at sila yung nag-implement nun. So it's like, it's it's a normal thing. Pero tinitignan ng auditor kung ano yung tendency. Ina-assess ng auditor yung tendency ng management na i-override yung control. Bakit? Kasi pag na-override yung control, that means there's a possibility of internal control issue. There's a possibility of fraud. Okay. So, tinitignan mo maigi. May kakayaan yung company na gawin yan. Sorry. May kakayaan yung management na gawin yan. Pero tinitignan mo kung, kung ginagawa ba talaga ng management yun o hindi. Because there, is a con there are legal consequences for that. So, what are the duties ng isang forensic accountant or the auditor? Number one, sabi dito, it's developing application to assist presentation of financial evidence pertaining to sa fraud na nangyari yun. Communicating the results of the engagement and collection of documents. And number three, assisting legal proceeding, including testifying in court and preparing visual aid to support the trial evidence. So, madalas sa madalas, nasa korte ka. Kasi ikaw yung iniimbitihan to testify at to present um, yung mga evidences. Okay? So, anong pagkakaiba ng regular accountant or regular auditor? sa isang forensic accountant o forensic auditor. So una, pag ikaw ay accountant, may be CPA, but not necessarily with additional certification. So, ibig sabihin, uh, pag ikaw ay accountant, may title ka na CPA. Pero kapag ikaw ay isang forensic accountant o forensic auditor, kinakailangan may additional certification ka pa, may additional skills ka pa. So meron kang CS CFE, CSP, LLB means law, bachelors of law meron kang kaalaman sa batas and the like. Ano pa, accountants does not necessarily testify in court on the result of the audit engagement. So, hindi sila madalas pinupu, pina, piniimbitahan sa korte. Pero pag forensic accountant ka, frequently testify in court as an expert witness, presents his credentials and past experiences. Ano pa, sa mga regular accountants, if made to testify, ang testimony lang nila ay limited sa audit procedure na ginawa nila yung resulta lamang. Ibig sabihin to the extent of the financial statements compliance sa accepted accounting standards lamang. Pero pag ikaw ay forensic accountant, ang inyong testimony deals with the audit procedure, yung findings mo, pati na rin yung recommendation and technical analysis ng mga dokumento na in-audit mo. Okay? Pag regular accountant ka, yung services na pinoprovide mo or services in engage to client determine compliance lamang ng generally accepted accounting principles o yung mga international financial financing reporting standards. But not necessarily to detect fraud. Kaya sabi ko nga kanina, kung may fraud man na mangyari, your role is just to check, to assess whether yung bang fraud na yon ay may naging effect doon sa presentation ng kanilang financial statements. But you are not responsible doon sa pag-check kung sino yung gumawa ng fraud and how the fraud was done. Pero kung ikaw ay isang forensic accountant or auditor, in most cases, yung services must engage when there is already suspicion of fraud. So ang role mo is basically to find out how the fraud came in, how, how the fraud perpetrated and most likely who did that one para makikita mo kung sino. So where is there, why is there a need for forensic accountants? Bakit medyo lumalaki yung influence, nagiging mas in demand yung, yung, yung services ng mga forensic accountants ngayon? Many fraud cases are proved entirely by certain circumstantial evidences or what do you mean by that? It's a combination of circumstantial or direct evidence. Uh, it's indirect evidence or a direct evidence. But circumstantial, ibig sabihin, pwedeng may kinalaman doon sa main fraud na nangyaring yun. But seldom by direct evidence alone. 
So, fraudulent intent is usually proven circumstantially. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo siya direktang nakitang gumawa ng fraud. Pag sinabi mong circumstantial evidence, yung, it's, yung fraud ay connected sa ganito, lumabas lang sa ganito, kaya may suspicion na may fraud na nangyari. Okay? So, halimbawa, um, nakita mo na yung taong yun, medyo palagastos, marami siyang mga binibili, mamahaling bagay. But you look, you look into the salary of the employee, hindi naman ganun kataas. Pero meron siyang iPhone 12, meron siyang magandang kotse, marami siyang bahay, marami siyang lupa, may mga alahas siya. Pero hindi naman ganun kataas yung sahod niya. So, somehow, meron kang suspicion. At kapag inimbestigahan mo yung mga yun, pwedeng maka-link yun, makapag, yeah, pwede mo ma-connect yun doon sa fraud na nangyari. So it's circumstantial. Hindi siya direkta na nakita mo na may fraud siya ginawa. Okay? So it's just circumstantial. Okay? So sino ba itong mga forensic accountants na to? While forensic accountants or auditors usually do not provide opinions, the work performed and reports issued will often provide answers to ano yung kadalasan nilang sinasagot. How, where, what, why, and who did the fraud. So, sinasagot niya mismo yung mystery about the fraud. How, where, what, why, and who about the fraud. The, finan the forensic accountants have and are continuing to evolve in terms of use utilizing technology to assist in engagements to identify anomalies and inconsistencies. It is important to remember that it's not the forensic accountants that determine the fraud, but instead the court. Kwanya, ang trabaho ng auditor, or ng forensic accountant or forensic auditor, ay mangalap ng ebidensya of a possible fraud. At ang gagawin niya, ipipresent niya to sa korte. The only one who can say this is a fraudulent activity, this is an illegal activity, this is a criminal activity, it's just only the court. So kinakailangan lang kumalap ng ebidensya ng forensic accountant para mapatunayan nga na ito ay isang fraudulent activity. Okay? So kadalasan, ang tanong nila is, why is there a need for a forensic accountant? Ito yung concept ng, ng logic behind that. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Is it yes or no? Alitin ko. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Kung hindi mo naintindihan, kung baga ganito yan. Kung may tao na gumawa ng fraud, ibig sabihin, nagnakaw, at walang tao nakakita noon, may ebidensya ba? Kuha niya. Alitin ko. If a tree falls in a forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Kung ko-convert ko in a, in, a, in, a, in a easier way, kung may isang tao daw na nagnakaw, kung gumawa ng fraud, at wala namang tao nandun kung nakakita noon, ang tanong, meron bang ebidensya? So, ito po yung text, have to prove it. So, yan po yung trabaho ng forensic accountant. I-prove, kumualap ng ebidensya, na meron lang tao na nangalap. Ah, sorry, may tao na naggumawa ng fraudulent activity. Okay? Need to prove it. So, yun yung basically trabaho ng forensic accountant. Mga alat na ebidensya na may nangyari nga. Pero, never siya na magsasabi na merong fraud. It's just only the court that would determine this is a fraudulent activity. Okay? So, nangangalap lang siya ng ebidensya. Okay? Now, let's proceed to fraud concepts. Let's proceed to fraud. Medyo babalikan ko lang yung mga nabanggit ko kanina. So, when you say fraud, it's an act involving the use of deception, pang-uuto, pang-manipulate, uh, pang to obtain any illegal advantage. That's according to ISACA, uh, guideline number 30 on irregular and legal acts. Okay? Now, in layman's term, uh, ibig sabihin ng fraud, it's an intentionally dishonest act intentional, purposely, sinadya mo na gawin for what purpose? To gain advantage. 
And what is the advantage? Most likely, it's a financial advantage para makakuha ka ng financial gain. In terms of technical definition, an illegal act or series of illegal acts committed by non-physical means and by concealment itinatago mo or guile to obtain money or property to avoid the payment of loss of money or property or to obtain personal or business advantage. So, ang pagkakaiba ng fraud sa error is that fraud is what you call intentional. Pag sinabing error, it's unintentional. So, that's why intent and financial benefit. So, pag sinabi mong fraud, intentional dahil ang purpose mo magkaroon ng financial benefit whether direct or indirect financial benefit. Pag ito ay error, unintentional at wala ka namang purpose to gain financial benefit kasi hindi mo naman talaga sinasadya na mangyayari yun. Okay? So, yun yung mga importante. Intentionally dishonest, illegal act or series of illegal acts, and yung intent. In the, early, in the early 1980s now, there was a subtle shift in the way external auditors review clients' records. Companies began to use computer to perform the record keeping. So ito na po yung time na kung saan yung mga companies ay nagko-convert from manual to computerized system. Kaya po, from manual recording, ngayon yung kanilang record keeping ay nasa computer na. And the intense competition caused the auditing fees to fall as much as 50% from the mid-1980s to the mid-1990s. Thus, ang ginawa ng auditors? Auditors had to cut costs by reducing the labor-intensive processes by reviewing hundreds of corporate accounts. They grew more reliant on internal controls and worked less with account balances and entries. So, mas nag-focus ang mga auditors sa internal control. Bakit? Kasi kung maganda naman yung internal control ng company, most likely, Lesser lang yung fraudulent or yung mga erroneous activities or transactions dyan. Pero kung medyo bagsak yung internal control ng company, dun medyo matindi yung gagawin mo. Kaya nga, pagdating sa auditing, pag medyo maganda yung internal control ng company, mag test, test of control ka pa, bago ka gumawa ng substantive testing. Pero kung bagsak na yung internal control ng company, napansin mo na, bakit ka pa magta-test of control? Eh, alam mo na bagsak. Mag-substantive testing ka na, kumalap ka na ng evidence Okay, to prove yung mga, mga fraud, to prove yung mga problema, issues, ng transactions ng company. Because top executives can circumvent internal controls, they could manipulate the record and cook the books. By the way, yun yung tawag, cooking the books means you alter the records of your financial statements para maging maganda yung, yung itsura ng financial statements mo. Okay, eventually the results were the end run. Ito yung mga companies na medyo uh, malalaki yung pagsak po magsak po sila um, because of fraud nag 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 file ng bankruptcy because of fraud ito yung Enron Worldcom Xerox Xerox is still around but if you look at the history uh, may may history sila about fraudulent activities okay uh, Adelphi Communications and the fall of Arthur Anderson in the early 2000s Arthur Anderson is the one who audited Enron and the one who issued yung sinasabi ko kanina na opinion na sa mata nila is maganda pero nung inimbisigan bakit pumagsak is puno pala ng fraudulent activities. Okay? Much of the dispute line caused in the WorldCom debacle were initially expensed properly but later entries were made to turn this cost into capitalized assets. So, ano yan? Yung, yung, yun yung problema about um, asset recognition is it, or expense recognition. In expense mo siya, pero dapat pala kinakapitalize mo siya. Okay? Arthur Anderson was given limited access to General Ledger. The backup and support for the following 647 million entry was a yellow post-it note. Imaginein mo yung kanilang entry ay nasa post-it note lang. Say for example, property plan and equipment, 647 million um. Yeah, $647 million. Operating expenses, $647 million. Diba napaka-material? It's, it's, um, it's a question of asset recognition principle or expense recognition principle. So, balikan mo yung accounting standards mo. Kailan ika-capitalize, kailan yung expense yung assets. Okay? So, why do good people commit fraud? Yun yung tanong natin. Okay? Kung mabuting tao ka naman, 
ibig sabihin ba hindi ka gagawa ng frog? O bakit may mga ibang mabubuting tao na napipilitan gumawa pa rin ng frog? It's because of the frog triangle. Because number one, there's an opportunity because they can. Pangalawa, there's pressure. They need to. Okay? At pangatlo, rationalization. Because for them, there's nothing wrong with it. So sa tingin nila, okay lang naman. Kaya ginagawa nila. Okay? So ito yung tatlo na nagdadetermine na pwede na, na fraud, na merong fraud na mangyayari. Okay? So yan po yung itura. That's upper, uh, fraud triangle. Now, you usually look into red flags pagdating sa, sa fraud. Okay? Red flags are the risks, risk factors or risk indicators that conditions of fraud may exist. So these are indicators na may possibility na fraud. Naalala niyo yung kanina sa la previous discussion ko about um, survey, tinitignan mo ko yung executive ba ay uh, what do you call one, living beyond the means, tinitignan mo yung executive ba ay palipat-lipat ang bahay, tinitignan mo ko yung executive ba ay uh, palag, palapunta sa, gam, sa, sa casino for gambling so these are red flags these are indicators na pwedeng may fraud na nangyayari okay, so going back yung fraud tree na nabanggit ko kanina so, may tatlong klase ng fraud. Number one is corruption. It can be conflict of interest, bribery and corruption, illegal gratuities, bid rigging, uh, or procurement. Pangalawa is yung fraudulent statements, so yung booking the books, yung pag-alter ng inyong financial statements. Pwede ito ay patungkol sa revenue recognition, pwede patungkol sa accounting standards, reserves, and non-financial um, accounting. At ano pa? yung asset mas sa appropriation yung pagnanakaw. Pwede yung cash larceny, theft of other assets, inventory, AR fixed assets. Pwede pag-create ng fake na vendor, payroll fraud, um, TNE, expense fraud, and I forgot about it. And then theft of data. Okay? And then conduct of investigation. So, usually kapag ikaw isang for forensic accountant or forensic auditor, Hindi mo basta-basta may encounter yung ebidensya. You have to listen to tell uh, tell signs, yung mga palatandaan. Ano po ba yung mga palatandaan? For example, employee doesn't want to take leave of absence, hindi uma-absent yung empleyado. Baka sa tingin ng management, napakagaling ng empleyado niyan, ayaw uma-absent, napakahusay. Pero actually, may tinatago pala. Pwedeng regular monthly leave of absence, meron lang siyang naka naka-dedicate na monthly leaves. First in, last out employee. Be careful of that one. Lagi siya na una, huli rin siya umuwi. Baka inisip mo una, baka sipag rin empleyado. Eh baka may tinatago siya kaya siya lagi na una at last na umuwi. And there's an unusual exhaustion when employee arrives. Pagod na pagod yung empleyado. So, tignan mo maigay. Baka these are signs na may fraud na nangyari. So, ito yung profile ngayon. Kanina, binanggit ko to nung last, sabi ko, sa next slide ko to babanggitan. So, sino-sino ba yung mga kadalasan gumagawa, gumagawa ng fraudulent activities? Okay? Based sa survey, based sa data, as from Association of Certified Fraud Examiner, yung mga gumagawa ng fraud ay karina yung 31 to 45 years old, 67% ay lalaki, 33% ay babae. So, mas marami yung lalaki na gumagawa ng fraud. And sila po ay employee or managers, regardless kung ano yung position, gumagawa ng fraud. Depende kung anong klase ng fraud, pero it ranges from manager to employees. At the last hand, sila daw ay nag nagtatrabaho sa accounting, operations, sales, customer service, purchasing, and upper management. Okay? Um, has college or postgraduate degree. So hindi ibig sabihin na matas ang pinag-aaralan mo ay hindi ka nagagawa ng fraud. May tendency pa rin. They live beyond their means. Ito yung isang palatandaan. Magasto sila compared dun sa sinasahod naman nila. Meron silang financial difficulties and has no con has control issues and willingness to share the duties. So gusto nila sila lang yung gumagawa. Bakit? Kasi nga, baka may tinatago. Pag shinare mo yung duty, baka makita ko anong ginagawa mo. Matuklas ang fraud uh, may ginagawa mo. Okay? So the most important thing in there is live beyond their means. Ano pa, characteristic na isang typical fraudster, meron siyang isang superficial charm. May charm siya. Madali siyang manginggan yun ng tao. Okay? Kaya alam mo yung mga budol-budol ka? 
madali sila mangingganyo ng tao, magaling sila makipag-usap. Okay? Madaling, madali sila gumawa ng mga kwento. Okay? May high sense of self-worth and e egocentricity. Mataas yung kanilang self-confidence. Pathological lying. Normal na sa kanila yung pagsisinangaling. Okay? Lack of remorse or guilt. Lifestyle does, does not fit income. Access to money or assets. Problem at home. Problems dealing with pressure. Meron silang mabigat na utang. Real or imagined grievances. May mga sama ng loob sila. Pwedeng sa management. Kaya nagnanakaw sila. Take little or no vacation. Work at hours. Pwedeng siya ay nagtatrabaho kahit na late na. Baka may tinatrabaho siya, may tinatago siya. Low morale and drug or gambling problems. So yun yung kadalasan. Okay? Now, according sa 2010 uh, Association of Certified Fraud Examiner Report, now 48% ng mga fraud ay nadedetect sa pamamagitan ng tip and accident. So pag sinabing tip, yung nagbibigay ka ng pabuya, kung sino magsusumbong, secretly tatawag. Kaya nga nabanggit ko kanina, ibang mga malalaking company, they've got their toll-free hotline kung sino yung gusto magsumbong patungkol sa isang fraud na nangyayari. Ganon din po yung intent na ginawa ng gobyerno, kaya maganda yung ginawa yung 888. Kasi you, you just, if you encountered some fraudulent activity, pwede ka magsumbong. At pwede investigahan tagad yun. And true enough, 40.2% ng mga fraud activity ay nadedetect sa pamamagitan ng tip. Pangalawa is 15.4% by management review, 13.9% yung internal audit, 8.3% accident hindi mo sinasadya nakita, account reconciliation 6.1% and so on. At ang pinakamababa is yung IT control. Napigilan ng control is just 0.8%. Okay? So, yun yun. And according to, balik tayo, according to SAS or Statements and Auditing Standards number 99, which actually supersedes SAS number 82, effective December 15 of 2002, ini-incorporate na po na kasama sa trabaho ng isang auditor ang pagtingin kung may indicator, may red flags pagdating sa fraud triangle. Yung opportunity, yung uh, pressure, at yung rationalization. Ini-enforce din doon sa SAS number 99 yung professional skepticism, pag-expand ng team discussions and brainstorming, revenue recognition, at ang paggamit ng technology. Okay? At sinusundan po natin yung Surveillance and Oxley Act of 2002 din. So dito sa Surveillance and Oxley Act, uh, nag-create sila ng public oversight board, uh, in-increase sila ang audit committee responsibilities. So kaya bawat company, meron silang audit committee at may mga additional tasks itong audit committee na ito. Specifically, prohibit, uh, prohibited activities. So, eight non-audit services now prohibited by company also performing audit. Ito yung maibig sabihin na kung ako yun o kaya ako kung ako yun nag-audit sa'yo, hindi ako pwede magbibigay ng consultancy sa'yo. Hindi pa rin nagbibigay ako ng advice tapos si audit din kita kasi may conflict of interest. So may mga non-audit services na hindi mo pwedeng gawin kapag ikaw ay nag-audit ng company na yun. Okay? And then pinapatawan din ng criminal sanctions yung mga gumagawa ng fraud and whistleblower protection. Okay? So fraud is error in intent. So ang fraud ay kunwa-kunwaring error pero intentional naman. Not in judgment. Okay? Criminal behavior is learned. We are not born with it. So, remember this one. Walang tao ang masama. Walang tao na pinanganak. Bata pa lang criminal na. Um, baby pa lang criminal na. Wala po. Ito po ay natututunan. Depende kung saan environment ka. Kung ikaw ay nabuhay sa isang environment na maganda, maayos, congratulations. Therefore, you will grow as an upright person. Pero kung medyo minalas ka at nabuhay ka sa isang environment na normal lang krime, normal lang ganito. Just imagine if you if you were born, like ngayon, yung nangyayari sa, sa Israel and Palestine. Di ba? Kung it's, it's like a hundred years war. Kung nabuhay ka sa ganong klase ng war, na normal lang ang confrontation, pagpapatay between the two, patayan between the two, 
then magiging iba yung upbringing mo. So therefore, ganun din po ito. Criminal behaviors learn. We are not born with it. Okay? So by the way, uh, just as in the last part of the discussion, um, siguro na-discuss na ito sa inyo, pero isi-share ko lang. It's a good way. Mga palatandaan, kung ikaw ang nakikipag-usap sa isang tao, malalaman mo kung ano yung ginagawa niya by just looking at the signs. Okay? So ano-ano po yung mga signs na yun? So if you look at the eyes of the person, kung pointing upper right yan, ibig sabihin that person is trying to recall something. Diba? Ganon din yung ginagawa mo. Pag nakikipag-usap ka tapos may pilit kang inaalala, so anong ginagawa mo? Diba? Yung mata mo nakapoint sa upper right. So ganon din po yun pag, pag nakikipag-usap. Pag ikaw ay, ang, ang mata mo ay nasa lower left, you are trying to recall a feeling. Okay? Ano pa? Pag ikaw ay ang mata may nasa, nakatuon sa right, um, that means you're recalling a sound. Pag nakatungo, nakatingin sa baba, you are talking to yourself. It's just a palatandaan, pero hindi naman kanyang ganun. It's just a natural thing na pinapakita ng tao. Ano ba? Common uh, gestures of lying, di ba? Pag yung bata, you caught lying, bigla niyang tinatakpan yung bibig niya. Okay, ganun din po yan. Pag ito ay matanda na, sometimes you cover your mouth. Um, when when you're talking to someone and he keeps on covering his mouth, then there is an indication that he might be lying. But it's not 100% sure. It's just an indication that he might be lying. O kung madalas siyang nag scratch sa kanyang neck, like, like this, nag siyang nag scratch meaning he's uncomfortable. That means because baka nag Diba pag nagsisi na maling ka, some, you're just making up stories. That's why your body feels uncomfortable. Kaya kung madalas sa gaze scratch yan, baka that person is lying. Ano pa? If you keep touching your nose, okay? Parang ganyan. Except for may allergy ka or whatever, kung sisipun ka, that's an exemption. Pero kung madalas yung um, hinahawakan yung kanyang ilog, pwedeng nagsisi na maling din siya. Okay? O kaya kung madalas yung ayusin yung kanyang collar, Kasi kung nag, nagsisinangaling ka, pwedeng pinagpapawisan ka, so irritable ka, kaya inaayos mo yung color mo. Okay? Pwedeng gesture din yun na ikaw ay nagsisinangaling. And if you keep on grabbing your ear, that means uh, I don't want to hear about it. Kung nahipag-usap ka, kung kausap mo lagi niyang uh, hinahawakan yung kanyang tenga, baka gusto yan sabihin sa'yo na ah, ayoko ba, kung tutusin, ayoko pakinggan <laughs> yung sinasabi mo. Okay? And lastly, kapag yung tao ay nakapag ganyan at nakakross yung kanyang, parang nakakross yung kanyang uh, yung fist, yung kanyang end. So that means uh, he doesn't start interested and it shows hostile attitude. Okay? So, so far that ends the presentation. But let me just, allow me just to present this one funny, interesting uh, thing that I've read. Kung okay lang, may time pa naman po tayo. It's still about gestures, kung, if you would permit me. Uh, may question pala. May mga similarities and differences po ba FA, forensic accountant, sa, sa mga forensic? Uh, sorry, what do you mean about FA, yung financial accountant or forensic accountant? Yung mga kasama sa mga detectives sa mga crime scenes. Ah, okay. If you're referring about forensic accountants na employed sa NBI, Actually, don't be confused. When I say forensic accounting, it's the bigger discussion of forensic accounting. At isang under nun is yung auditing part of it. Okay? Kaya, when I say forensic accounting, it's interchangeably used as forensic auditing then. Kasi your accounting uh, is pertaining to fraud. And at the same time, you're collecting information, you're just auditing it. Okay? So, yung mga tao na kasama sa sa NBI, say for example, employed sa NBI, hindi sila mismo yung sumusugod doon sa mga crime scenes. Ang kanilang trabaho is basically, doon sa mga nagkakalap sila ng dokumento doon sa mga gumawa ng fraud. Kunwari yung mga scam, yung mga pyramid companies, pyramiding companies. So, yun yung trabaho nila. Pumupunta sila doon sa crime scene, yung company, yung mga naloko, sila yung nagkakalap ng mga na informasyon. Okay? So, um, ang tag doon? Ano yung tanong doon? Similarities ba? Um, 
ang FA, forensic accounting sa mga forensic. Okay, so siguro yung yung tanong mo is tungkol dun sa mga tao, depende kung yung iba kasi forensic examiners, sila yung tumitingin ng mga murders, yung mga, yung mga, mga cases ng mga patayan or whatever. Pero ang kanilang trabaho, yung mga forensic accountants, more on records na, just to uncover yung mga, for, uh, mga fraudulent activities, financial activities. Okay? So another question. Um, my question po ako, there is a high rise of white collar crimes in the country nowadays po. Lalo na po yung, nung lumabas yung, okay, sorry, ulitin ko lang ha. My question po ako, there is a high rise of white collar crimes in the country nowadays. Lalo na po yung lumabas yung alleged anomaly ng PhilHealth. With this po, there is an increasing need of fraud experts or forensic accountants. Kapag po ba dumami ang mga forensic accountants, is there any chance na mabawasan or mawala yung graft, bribery, and corruption sa government? Okay. Uh, let me just answer that one. Kung dumami ba yung mga forensic accountants, may chance ba na mabawasan o mawala yung mga... Um, corruptions or fraudulent activities. Una kasi, ito yung titignan nyo. Ang forensic accountants, andyan lang para mangalap ng, ng mga ebidensya because there's already a suspicion of fraud. Kung gusto natin from the very start na mawala, actually you cannot, you cannot remove fraud because in it from people, pwedeng gumawa ng fraud. Kaya nga may fraud triangle. Pero kung gusto natin babawasan ng fraud, Let's start from the ones who created the internal control. Palakasin muna natin ang internal mabasa ng pagkakaroon ng fraud. Kanya? So, unahin natin yung internal control muna. And then after that, i-follow up mo with investigation, which is partly true. Kaya kung dumami yung mga fraud examiners na hinahire ng government, kapag dumami yung mga um, fraud auditors natin, may chance na mabawasan yung fraud simply because may nag-check sa mga ginagawa nila. Okay? So, yun nga lang, hindi yun yung only solution. That's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Hindi yung makakapag-solve is yung fraud auditors lang. It's a team measure. It's a team effort. Yung gumagawa ng internal control at nag-implement doon dapat mapaganda at the same time yung nag-follow up at nag-check. Okay? So, uh, basically sa government, it's the commission ng audit ang siyang gumagawa ng mga investigation pagdating sa mga activities like, you know, yung mga ganun. Unless it is on a criminal label, level, kaya pumapasok ang NBI at nag-iimbestiga sila kung may mga criminal activities na doon. Pero initially, ang nag-check una doon, ang nag-audit is yung kumbaga, internal auditor ng gobyerno, which is actually the external auditor of the government, is yung um, uh, commission on audit. Okay? So, dun sa tanong mo, yes, I would say, mababawasan kung mag-hire ng marami at dumami ang mga forensic accountants. Yun nga lang, it's not a full solution answer. There should be a holistic solution with, which would involve unahin natin yung internal control implementation, yung internal control policies. Kaya nga importante sa gobyerno na may maliwanag na policy okay? kung paano gagawin yung tamang transactions. Okay? Okay, so may tanong pa ba? So, if not, i-share ko lang po ito. It's, this is a funny thing. I don't know if you would believe me. Um, if you would allow me, medyo malapit ako yung time. But let me just share this one. I, I found this one from a magazine. And I'd like to share this to you. Huwag niyo na masyadong paniwalaan. Pero this is according to a certain person called Joey Yap. Okay? And according to him, there are indicators to know what people are thinking even without them, even without speaking to them. Kung bagay yung first impression, tingnitnan mo lang yung tao, you would know 
basically what they're thinking without even speaking to them. Okay? So are you with me? So start. Sabi niya dito, lahat ng tao merong mask na sinusuot. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng tao tulad niyo, tulad ko, pag lumalabas tayo, nagsusuot tayo ng mask. Hindi ito yung totoong tayo. Pwedeng may may pinipresent lang tayo ng magandang personality, pero baka iba yung at yung totoo sa atin. Pwedeng masaya tayo, pero actually malungkot tayo. So nagsusuot tayo ng mask. Sabi niya, there are, there are good reasons why we wear masks, intentionally or unconsciously. Whether intentionally or unconsciously. The reason is to hide our identity, to become someone else, to be better than who we really are, or ultimately, to put ourselves in a position to succeed. Kaya tayo nagsusot ng mask for all these reasons. Okay? Tulad ng kung, magpapay, kung pupunta ka sa isang interview daw, pinipresent mo yung best self mo. Pero actually, pag na-hire ka na, lumalabas yung self mo, yung true self mo. Okay? At workplace, we exhibit our finest and most professional self. Even if not workplace, if you are in the school, even with your friends, you try to present your best self. Pero pag sa bahay ka, iba yung ikaw sa bahay, iba yung ikaw na nasa school. Tama po ba? So with someone new, we met who is potentially a romantic partner, we become our most polished, poised, and confident self. Lalo na kung may crush ka daw, it's a romantic relationship, pinipresent mo yung best self mo. Okay? Mahinhin ka, okay? uh, o kaya ang bait-bait mo, matulungin ka, maalalahanin ka, something like that. Okay? You present your best self. There are even professionals who master the art. It's called the, po the poker face. Ang galing-galing magtago. It's still the same person behind the mask. But let's say we get to control where the spotlight is pointed. So what if we know, even though nakamask yung ta, know who the person is inside? Pwede ba yun? So... According to Tanda Ready, okay, sabi niya dito, saan muna natin ginagamit yung, yung smoke screen na ito? Yung, paano ba natin nalalaman? Mask. Who has it all actually doesn't. Yung mga nasa social media na nagpurpose ng ganda-ganda, dami-daming mga blessings, pero actually, di, sa, sa totoo lang, hindi naman tama. If, what if the person you think is a nice guy turns out to be the nastiest, cruelest, and most abusive person you've ever met? What if the person who seemed to be, sorry, what if the person who seemed to need love the least is happy and content actually turns out to be to need it most? Yung mga taong masayahin, pero actually sa totoo lang, sila ay mas nangangailangan ng pagmamahal. Or worse, what if that person is silently suffering from depression? Tumatawa pero silently suffering depression. So ginagamit natin yung technique na to in three ways. One, in terms of wealth. Pangalawa, in terms of romance. And pangatlo, in terms of health. Ano yung binabanggit ko yung paano natin nalalaman yung person behind the mask? Saan natin ginagamit ito? Una daw sa wealth. We'll use this when hiring someone trustworthy or getting more sales by knowing what to teach. Kapag nag-hire ka daw ng tao, para malaman mo kung empleyado niya ay trustworthy o hindi, pwede mong gamitin ito. Pagdating sa romance or relationship, para malaman mo kung he or she is faithful bago ka makipagrelasyon, as well and financially strong as she looks, ginagamit mo rin daw ito. At pangatlo, ginagamit mo ito para malaman yung health ng isang tao if, a, if someone is su silently suffering from depression. So, sa madali sabi, ito mga babangkitin ko ay ginagamit pagdating sa hiring, sa wealth, pagdating sa relationship, at pagdating sa health. Okay? So, ano yung mga palatandaan behind the mask kung sino ba yung totoong tao? Let's start with this one. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly kung medyo malaki yung screen ninyo. Okay? First is to look at the eyes. Sabi niya dito, eyes are the windows to a person's soul. 
Sabi niya, people with big eyes are usually passionate, open, and make honest colleagues. So kung may kakilala kang tao na medyo malalaki ang mata, they are usually passionate and they are usually honest. People with small eyes, mga Chinese o yung mga singkit, parang katulad ko, are shy, silent, and hold many secrets daw. So kung may kakilala ka na singkit, malilit ang mata, they are shy, silent, and hold many secrets. So who do you want to hire? It depend on the job requirement. Okay? Kung gagamitin mo ito sa health, sa wealth, kung sino yung gusto mong i-hire, depende kung ano yung gusto mong kailangan, yung kailangan mong tao. Pagdating sa nose, when hiring a trustworthy person, find the one with a straight nose. Straight nose down. Okay? Pag crooked nose daw yan, it indicates a cunning and devious person. Mapagpanggap na tao who cannot be trusted. They are good at telling lies. Again, I don't know if you would believe me. This is just interesting and fun thing. So if, if you would believe me, that's good. If, if not, then nothing happens. When it comes to the lips, pag balance thick lips daw yan, ibig sabihin yung top and the bottom, yung, yung paras, yung ta, taba, yung thickness ng lips mo. Okay? A balanced thick lips that does not show gums or protruding teeth is a sign of a sincere person. Okay? Paano pag walang nose daw? Pinoy daw po. Okay. <laughs> Iba ko sa na yun. Okay? And then, people with gummy smile. Alam mo yung pag tumatawa or nag smile labas yung gilagid, yung gum. Okay? Ang sinasabi daw, usually indiscipline. Medyo garaga o medyo indiscipline. Okay? While a mouth that cannot be closed completely in a relaxed position is less trustworthy. Okay? So yun daw yung palatandaan. Now, sabi dito, in this test, how do you know if someone is impulsive? and will respond better to offer response or more aggressive sales presentation. Kunwari, may customer ka, paano mo malalaman kung sa mga offers na binibigay mo is nag-respond siya in them. A person with a receding forehead is a fast and possibly impulsive thinker. Yung receding forehead, yung medyo malaki, yung, yung forehead. Okay? Ibig sabihin, mabilis sila mag -decision. Kaya pag nagbenta ka sa kanila, biglain mo lang, bibili na yan. Parang ganun. Okay? A person with a receding chin, medyo mahaba yung baba. Okay, chin leaps into action once they've made up their mind. Ano daw yun? Mag-iisip muna sila bago gumawa ng decision. Okay, so yun daw yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa. Next, how do you know if someone is calculative or generous? Yung tipong taong nagpo-compute palagi, o yung tipong taong palabigay yung in short, kuripot o hindi, parang ganun. Uh, iba yung receding hairline, Sir Jaram. Sign of aging na yan. So calculated, ibig sabihin yung mga kuripot, nagko-compute muna bago gumastos. Generous yung laging palagastos yan, labas ng labas. So kapag daw a person with a narrow eyebrow, ibig sabihin yung kanilang kilay ay medyo malapit sa isa't isa, Ang sabi, yung taong yun is close-minded and calculated. Bago siya gumawa na action, nag-iisip mo na yan, nagka-calculate mo na yan. Tamantalang ang generous naman is yung mga taong malaki yung ka ng kanilang eyebrows. Ibig sabihin, medyo nagkakalayo yung kanilang kilay. Okay? Sila daw yung mga generous. Okay? Ano pa? Let's go to romance sa inyong relationship. Paano mo daw malalaman if someone is faithful? It's a very controversial topic. So being faithful is the key to a long-term, long-lasting relationship. But how can you identify an unfaithful partner? Remember, these are possibilities that you need to analyze. Hindi ito 100%. Nakarecord ko ito. So possibilities. Okay, so again, these are only possibilities. It doesn't mean na yung taong yun ganyan, 100% ganyan ka na. Don't, don't start 
arguing with that person using this presentation. That's a disclosure. Okay? That's why I have mentioned earlier, it's funny but an interesting thing that you just need to tinkle your mind. Para lang pag-isipan nyo lang. Pero hindi naman ito 100% scientifically proven or what. Nothing. Okay? So, sabi dito, to identify a faithful man sa lalaki, the temple should be slightly uh, fleshy. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Yung dito sa gilid ng inyong mata. Dapat fleshy. Medyo malaman. Okay? Okay, yung mga may klase sa loo, okay na yun. Pwede naman na kayo mag -leave. And then, para dun sa sunken o yung walang masyadong laman dito sa gilid, ibig sabihin, troubled relationship daw yun sa inyong partner. Okay? Sa mga babae naman daw, a lady with a straight nose tends to have a more faithful partner. Straight nose. Buti pa yung iba na. And samantala, a lady with a protruding bone on the nose bridge, yung medyo yung sa gitna ng ilong, medyo may buto dyan, protruding, means inflexible or argumentative. Laging nakikipag-argue sa'yo, which could cause her partner to seek solace in another woman's arm. Lagi kayo nag-aaway. Okay? How do you know if someone is last full? Last. So, big watery eyes hints a very emotional person. Samantalang a person with a thick bottom lips, ma, mas ma thicker yung bottom lips, is sensuous person who shows their love and affection openly. Okay? Ano pa? How do you know if someone is just a sweet talker? Magaling lang magsalita. A person with an overly thin upper lip is capable of sweet talking, especially in the pursuit of sexual gratification. Yung yung upper lip daw. So mag magaling sila magsalita. Okay? In health, this is the last part, paano mo malalaman kung ang isang tao nagsasuffer ng depression? Which is very important. And this is one sign that I'd like you to focus kasi baka yung kaklase mo, kakilala mo, naglalagay lang yan ng mask, pero actually, nagsasuffer ng depression. Depression is not easy to spot. However, they may be stable. They may be able to help a depressed person if we have the ability to recognize the sign. Una yung forehead, pangalo yung eyes, pangatlo yung cheeks. A person with life less eyes, yung walang buhay, yung kanyang mata, unhealthy cheek, and forehead comple complexion, medyo, uh, tawag dito, hindi na siya pinkish, kundi, alam mo yung wala, masamang pakiramdam is medyo na, namumutla or yung tipong um, pumupute or something like that, could be suffering from depression. Okay? Dark eye bags and very pink cheeks indicate weak kidneys. Okay, so just watch out with those dark eye bags. And medyo reddish ang inyong cheeks. Baka may problema sa kidney nyo daw. Okay, so that ends my presentation. I hope you liked it. Um, again, please don't take it seriously. This is just like an article that I've read that I'd like to share to you. It's not a scientifically proven thing. And don't um, take it personally. Just something to laugh about and something to to rekindle into our mind na uh, may mga bagay na ganito pala na pwedeng pag-usapan, okay? So, any questions? I hope you liked it. I'm sorry that we extended our time. Um, and this, since this is our last meeting, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for the whole semester. Um, it might be the last one that I will be discussing for you. And I hopefully, tignan natin kung next semester, kung may online pa ba, kung makakapagturo pa ba ako or hindi. If not, I hope you all the best in life. And I hope to see you soon, someday, if I go back there. Um, and I wish you all the best. So thank you very much for accommodating me for this semester. Marami salamat po. Thank you very much, sir. No worries. Sir Mike. Sir John? Announcement lang po yung mga graduate po, or graduating rather. By the earliest is tomorrow, pero kung wala, Monday po yung isang mga. Uh, kasama na po yung diniscuss po ni Sir Mike ngayong araw. Tapos, yung sa mga regular po, uh, by Saturday na lang din para consistent tayo with our schedule. Yan lang po. Okay. 
Thank you very much. So next week na ba yung exam, Sir Jaram? Po, sir. Yes, yes po. Next week na po. Okay, so do your best and I hope everyone will pass the examination. So just focus and I'm sure you will, be, you will succeed um, later on. Okay? So thank you once again and may you have all a good afternoon or a good weekend and have a blessed um have a blessed day have a blessed uh, weekend thank you see you soon